Explain to me how JP Morgan lost more yesterday in market cap than Silvergate Bank was ever worth. Mm. So Silvergate at the peak was 16 billion. Today it's like 100, 100 million. At the peak, 16 billion. And JP Morgan lost 19 billion yesterday. Silicon Valley Bank lost more, 75 times more than Silvergate did yesterday and is losing again this morning. So uh, help me understand how this is a crypto problem. This is not a crypto problem. This is a good old fashioned bank run. And you have, and I use this term affectionately to my brethren, idiot venture capitalists out telling their portfolio companies to hurry up and withdraw your money from Silicon Valley Bank. Has anyone ever studied the term bank run? After a week of turmoil in the banking industry, starting with the failure of Silvergate Bank, investors and business leaders in Silicon Valley are demanding that Silicon Valley Bank be bailed out. Mark Yusko, a hedge fund investor, recently discussed the banking crisis as a guest on the BlockWorks podcast. Yusuker, who predicts a bailout for Silver Bank, explains that the problem is that the bank is too big to fail. Allow me to pass the floor over to Yusko. How a bank makes their money is what's called NIM, net interest margin. The difference between what they pay depositors on the deposit, usually a little bitty amount, in the old days it used to be big, but that's when interest rates were much higher, and the amount that they charge their borrowers. So if, let's just say interest rates are, are 1% and I pay depositors 1%, but I can make loans at 4%, I get a 3% NIM, net interest margin. Mm. Unfortunately, with financial repression, when interest rates went to zero, so you're paying depositors zero, so well, yeah, that's that's cool, right? People give me money and I don't have to pay them any money. In fact, there were even negative interest rates, right? Where people paid the banks know, for the privilege nuts. of having them be quote unquote safe. And, but the problem was the yield curve was pretty flat so you could only lend at a couple percent or, you know, my mortgage at one point was like down to three point something percent. And government bonds were one percent, one and a half percent. So here's the thing. If your NIM had shrunk to one and a half, it's kind of hard to make real profits. Right, right. And so what they said is, yeah, okay, we got crushed. We all collectively got crushed last year interest rates rose, we got these unrealized losses, but our buffer is right. good sized. It's good sized because we're a profitable bank because we got good customers and we got lots of customers and we had this big growth. All right, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna rebalance our stack, our green stack, and we're gonna sell some of these short duration assets at a loss. And we're going to, because these used to be long duration assets, but now they're, they're shorter. And we're going to take the loss, okay? Which means we're probably going to have to raise a little new equity to, you know, to cover that loss. But there's plenty of people that want to invest in us. Now, the existing equity holders are like, whoa, whoa, whoa then I get diluted. Okay, so you get a little bit of dilution. Don't panic, okay? But, but here's the genius of it. Now you're going to take that new money and you're gonna reinvest it at four or five percent. And now your NIM goes from 1.89, I think, that was their average NIM, to maybe three on that portion. And you keep doing that slowly, okay? But because, you know, freaking internet and social media and, and you know, like I said, venture capitalists who shall remain nameless, who told all their companies to withdraw and get out first, which is irresponsible, um, you got a bank run. Well, now now the, the uh-oh is bigger than the buffer and everybody wants their money back, so you're creating more uh-oh because you're having to realize more losses. And so we're sowing the seeds of our own demise by collective, by collective panic. And if you go to, and we've talked about this you know, many times, the Knickerbocker Trust debacle in, in 1907, we are reliving this, 
right? This is what's happening. This is exactly what's happening. And that's what Silvergate was all about, is JP Morgan famously quipped, the, the man, not the bank, the, the man, famously quipped, I like a little competition. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't like a lot of competition. I, I like a little competition. Yeah. So when Knickerbocker Trust got too big, what did he do? He fomented panic by spreading a rumor that they were insolvent. And you saw, see, go to Wikipedia, go to Wikipedia, type in 1907 Knickerbocker Trust, and you will see a picture of in, men in their top hats and, and coats and ties and women in, in their dresses running to the bank with their umbrellas because it was raining that day, uh, trying to withdraw their money. That was a bank run. And banking works great 99% of the time, but bank runs are lethal. And so because of that, they took interest rates to zero. Well, why did they do that? Well, because you'd wiped out the gold in the chart, right? Green is assets, red is liabilities, yep. gold is gone, okay? The uh-oh, very big. But as long as we don't realize it, it's not bad. So the gold is gone. So how do we get the gold back up? The you take interest up. rates at zero and you say, come to me, my friend. <laughs> I will lend you money at zero. Yeah. And because I have this, this debt addiction problem, I need you to buy bonds. And I need you to buy lots of them. But if you borrow from me at zero and buy a 2% bond, lever it up 12 times, you make a lot of money. And so slowly but surely, the gold crept back up. So it was about fixing the balance sheet of the banks. And so over the 13 year period, the gold got built back up. So then it's like, okay, now we're good. Well, now I'm tired of not making any money because I can't you know, lend high. So, hey, Jerome, could, could you hike rates for me? And then I can pay my depositors still less because rates are sticky lower on deposits, right? They don't go from zero to three or four. They go from zero to half to one. Right. They eventually creep up, but but there's, but you can start lending at the higher rates, like the day right. that it changes. So now the NIMS expanded. So if I can pay my depositors one and I can lend at five, oh my gosh, I'm making 4%. Ha, <laughs> awesome. So now the last year has been about bank income statements. And if you look since October of last year, bank stocks up 50, 60, 70%. I mean, they were cruising. They were like gross stocks. Like, what the frick? What the hell's going on? It's all about the money. Well, now you got this problem where mm -hmm. they they said, we need, to, we need to stop this crypto thing. We need to stop this crypto thing. How do we do that? These banks, these banks that are, you know, they're, they're helping people convert fiat to crypto. We need to get rid of them. Okay. Or I should say lenders. There are these lenders. Okay. So Celsius, you're gone. Voyager, you're gone. BlockFi, you're gone. Wait a second. I thought we fixed the problem. No, there are these, these real banks that are they're helping people convert fiat to crypto. We need to shut them down. Okay. But what they forgot, okay, law of unintended consequences. Yes, Signature Bank had a large crypto business, but a gigantic portion of their deposits have nothing to do with crypto. They were a regular bank before. So now those people are freaking out because like, whoa, 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 yeah, whoa right. my, the stock price is going down. I, I'm go I got to get my money out. So you foment a bank run. Well, some of those people happen to be entrepreneurs. And then they I talk know. to other entrepreneurs and yeah. they go, I'm a Silicon Valley bank. And there was a, there was a great piece and I wish I had seen it, um, uh, that this guy did on January 23rd. And I, I wish I could give him credit, but I can't remember his name, but it's, it's a long thread on Twitter. And he went line by line through this problem at Silicon Valley bank and said, look, 
if this, he didn't say if the signature bank thing goes, but he says if this banking panic increases, these guys are toast. And he said, look, I'm short, so I'm just telling Keep you those, why. Yeah. So, um, okay. but it was an amazing analysis. And so, so now what we need is a TBF, TBTF moment, too big to fail. And I think that happens on Sunday. Leave a comment if you found value in the content. Please consider clicking the subscribe button below. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.